So I want you to know if she can do it, anyone can. So what I did tonight, I wanted to, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult with a microphone, but I'll uh, probably see if I can, uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do here. I wanted to just quickly show how are we going to do worm, can worm composting really cheap, really easily, okay? Uh, as I mentioned, there's a whole variety of different ways to compost. Some of them are safer than others. This is the easiest, safest way of composting. There's, uh, once you let all this uh, material go through the worm's intestines, what comes out is essentially a microbial, non-toxic, uh, I don't want to call it sterile because that's the wrong word. It is definitely not human, uh, there are no human pathogens that are going to come out at the end of it. So, okay, right on, Tim. Obviously did not go out and buy new buckets because I was talking about how to do this cheap and these were cheap. Okay, so everybody has buckets around in some way, shape, or form. Five gallon buckets, I brought two of them. Okay, one of them I brought uh, some stale bread from Whole Foods. Obviously plenty of us have stale bread left over from our, you know, whenever we eat or don't eat enough of it, it's going to go bad. Got a little bit of broccoli that's uh, looking like you could potentially eat it. This has been sitting out in the sun for about three weeks. This is uh, kefir that was left over from Whole Foods. Uh, by the time I was able to um, bring it all home and try to get, <laughs> roll it out to veterans groups and whatever, I didn't have the time. It sat in the sun. So all of this stuff, I just brought a whole variety of different things you might find in your home uh, that, that you could actually throw into a worm bin. Now remember, scaling this all the way up to a farm size scale. You do not want to go this way with worms, you want to go this way with worms. If you go this way, you're going to get hot. As I was talking about cubic, three to four cubic feet of material is going to give you thermal compost. You get cooked worms. They taste good, but they are not going to benefit you. Okay. So what you want is when you have too much material, spread it out. You won't get the heat. The worms will thrive on it. So I'm just kind of emptying my bucket out here. I have some leftover chips that were a customer term from Whole Foods. I have some pasta. I have a number of different yogurts and some apple and an explosive grapefruit juice. <laughs> and one more yogurt and a cucumber. So what I want to do, first of all, really quickly and easily, and this is why the demo is going on. Whoa. Smash watermelons and throw them out in the ground. How hard is that? I drilled a number of holes in the bottom. It's really easy. Let's put one in the side here so that it's easy for me to pull this one out of here. It releases the air so that I can actually release it and get it out of there. Okay? There's a reason that I want one. Okay? So there's a reason I want one. That has not got holes in the bottom. As you're doing this, there's going to be plenty of liquid that goes through. Okay? You want to save that, but you don't want to save it for very long. When you water your worms every time, use it right away. Don't let it sit and stagnate. It will become anaerobic. Toxins start to um, build up in anaerobic. That is not worm tea. Worm tea is aerobic, not anaerobic. You have to actually actively do something with it to make it aerobic. If it sits in the bottom, as soon as you put vegetables in and that, check this. The reason you want to have this sitting in here is one, so your worms don't escape down into the soil. Two, you will have some wonderful beneficial nutrients that are coming out of the bottom. Yeah. How long can you keep it aerobic? Like say, say I emptied the bottom and put it into an aerator. Uh, in an aerator, now if you're going to oxygenate it using a bubbler, you have about, mm, you want to be able to use it within about six hours. Okay, you want to be able to oxygenate it for no more than 15. And there's a whole nother, uh, uh, Evan did, uh, Ryan did a whole nother thing on compost tea. That's a whole nother thing that I don't want to get into today. All I want you to know is that worm tea is not the material sitting at the bottom of your worm bin. That's anaerobic and do not, do not let it sit there and use it on your vegetables. I will tell you, you will end up with problems. So you want to end up 
using this material right away. So I put this in, we're going to layer. And I, I brought in materials you would have commonly in your farm or your backyard. You can get shredded paper galore down at MCC. I went down there one day, one day by their office, and I picked up probably 17 garbage bags worth of shredded paper, and that was two and a half years ago, and I'm still using it. <laughs> you can get shredded paper galore. Now recognize, some shredded paper has uh, dyes and things that are not the greatest for organic certified, so you want to really be judgmental about the type of material you're going to use as your base material. I took some uh, grass that came from my yard. Okay, I'm putting that down as a, as a base layer. All right. And then I want to put in a little bit of water. Here's where your water is going to drain through down to the bottom. Obviously, this isn't worm tea yet. I took some, I'm going to take some scrapings, and this is where I wanted to really emphasize this why I left them here. I have the turkey tip. Did I mention, wait a minute, there's meat there, isn't there? Yeah. Did you see me put that in? Yeah. How many of you have ever read that worms don't eat meat? How many of you want to believe that that's bullshit? <laughs> okay, worms eat everything that was once alive. So I put banana peels, a bay leaf, stuff left over. I want everybody to recognize this is where your scraping should go. If it's not going to chickens or pigs or whatever, it should be going to your worms. All right, that's why I did this little demonstration. Um, Are you talking about earthworms? I am not talking about earthworms. Earthworms are an entirely different bear. I want compost worms. Red wigglers, you cannot import them anymore. There are thousands of them here on this island. No, millions of them here on this island. You can get them from people who are growing them right now. I don't sell them. I just give them because I want people to start doing it. It is the safest, easiest, mindless way of doing compost. How many people have heard that you can't do meat or dairy in worms? Plenty? Alright, see that? That's dairy, right? Hey, you get five cents back in the bottle. Alright? How many of you have heard? Yeah, you know you can put bread in, right? So you can do that. We'll put some bread in there. Alright? Do you notice I'm not really being particular in the way I'm doing this? I'm just kind of throwing it in here. Why is? Why do you think I'm doing this just kind of half ass? Because you can do it half-assed, right? <laughs> Worms will be half-assed. I brought in some, uh, this is a recycled mushroom container from uh, Costco. I thought, perfect, this is a great way to transport worms. And uh, actually, I have a roach in here too, which is also nice. That's going in. It'll either be a participant in the composting or somebody will eat it. And whether you believe it or not, there are tons of worms in here. There are compost worms. Now, I have huge... 250 pound to 300 pound tubs of worms going six to seven of these and out. I have dead mongoose in my pile. Within one week, that mongoose is gone. You cannot even see the mongoose. You did not, don't even know it exists. So, bam, shoot it with a pellet in the trap. It goes right in the compost and it's dead and it's composted. Okay? Don't waste this stuff. Nitrogen, all of life is about the struggle for nitrogen. Not about sex, not about oxygen, not about anything. The struggle for more nitrogen. We need nitrogen, damn it. And we can't get it. What are we breathing mostly? 70% nitrogen. Do we use it? No, it's benign. It doesn't do us a damn bit of good in, an, in, an, uh, in a gaseous form. As soon as it goes into a liquid form or a solid form, we can use it. Either our plants use it or we get it in some way, shape. That's the way we build muscle. That's the way we actually thrive. There's plenty more to it, obviously, but nitrogen is the building block for life. So that's what we're wanting to establish here. So I drilled just a few holes in the bottom. There's a milky looking liquid down on the bottom. No big deal, it's just starting. So then I'm gonna put a little bit of rice cake in here because this was something that was a customer return at Whole Foods. And I don't know how many of you realize that I do, uh, I compost all the meat, fish, dairy, and produce out of Whole Foods grocery store and make a huge uh, volume of it um, to, to create a high quality organic compost coming out of it. So there you have. Now, obviously plastic, you can throw it in there. But they're not going to eat it, so don't put it in. <laughs> but you will find that there are shreds of it in there. I don't care. You know, you will find tags of all kinds of different variety of things from all the fruits and vegetables that I get out of Whole Foods. You'll find them in there. The worms are not going to mess with it. 
Uh, one of the things you do want to do, eggshells are excellent. Smash them up. Don't just crack the egg and throw it in your thing. Take your hand, do it in, throw it in there, wash your hands off afterwards, but they would love it. Coffee grounds, all of the major coffee, uh, coffee stores nowadays, they give gar grounds for gardeners. That's like worms on, on caffeine. It's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm throwing in a little bit more here. A little mushroom. I really like to put mushrooms in. It's just a conceptual thing for me. I like the idea that there will be some sort of spores, fungi in there that, that basically allows there to be a more diverse uh, organisms within a compost. So I really like that. And stand back. Uh -oh. This uh, 1112. <laughs> okay. That's grapefruit juice. So remember, worms, the biggest problem with worms is that they're a living organism that need to actually have shade as if they were underground. So you have to actually simulate their loving, uh, their environment that they live in. So yes, we're creating a nice dark environment for them, but if you put this out in the sun, you put it in your car, it's going to kill your worms. So you need to put this in a shaded area. Yes, you can put this in your kitchen. But then you really might want to reconsider whether you want to put meat in. Meat, there are times, and I will tell you, very short periods of time, when you might get some small rot odor. Minimal. If you have, if you put it in there in too great of a volume, and that's what I'm overdoing right now because I said this is extreme. This is a, I just am giving you things that you would normally find in your kitchen. That's why I want you to see it. But this is extreme. This is beyond where you would normally put all of this in one, this is a huge amount. Normally I would have these in much bigger containers, but I want people to see this is what you can do. I'm going to throw those worms in at the end, and you will have whoever wins this bucket is going, is going to end up with, and I will tell you this, nobody has shit in this bucket once before. This is a, this is a shit free bucket. And Greg, how warm can it get? Uh, you know, Whatever the temperature of the soil normally is, I have seen where a few times when I've accidentally put too much layer this way versus this way, worms will crawl up the side and they will, they will cool themselves off. They're pretty damn smart. So what you want to do is you want to monitor that regularly. You do not have, this is a kind of a feed and forget sort of thing, sort of like the flush and forget thing that I was telling you about the composting toilet. Let's not flush and forget our shit. Let's compost our shit. But this you can kind of feed and sort of forget. Okay, as long as you keep a little bit of water in there. Oh, I said water. I'll put some more water in. Now that was all dry pasta. Dog food, cat food, sometimes you put it in a container. Ants get in there. Sometimes there's mold and mildew. Throw it in. The worms are going to clean it up. There's not going to be anything. No disease is going to get transferred over. And the beauty is... Uh, Cornell University, Purdue, a number of agricultural universities are finding that all you need is a 20% mixture of worm castings in with the rest of your compost in order to get the disease resistance for plants. So you don't have to have 100% worm castings. So when you mix it in, whether it's your seedlings, whether it's going in for compost tea, 20% mixture is all you need. Onions and citrus? Hell yeah, baby. Let it go. The citrus is another one. I meant to bring, I should have brought some oranges in to yeah, show that oranges. In. What do I have? Cucumber. Cucumber, thank you. I just threw everything. Um, oh, corn chips. Okay, somebody tried these ranch ones. Obviously, I think worms really like ranch dressing. So it's all here. Now, believe me. Go in, read everything you want. Somewhere in tonight, there was this concept of don't throw the turkey carcass away. Right? We all heard that. Don't throw the turkey carcass away. Boil the living shit out of it. Get all the damn good stuff out, and then throw it in here afterwards. Because then they will recycle all the rest of it. Yeah. Is there anything you can't put in there? Drain, drain oil. Plastic. Don't put anything that's manufactured, uh, like um, oil from your car. You don't want to put that in there. Um, Assuming that it was anything that was once alive will actually work. You actually can use worms to compost motor oil and other toxic stuff, but you don't want to use it for your garden or anything. But it is a, it is a way to actually convert that stuff. Yeah. 
a lot of people uh, blend the food up, and it's great. Like he was talking about chopping it up. Yeah. We got a lot of people keep a blender up on the counter when they're chopping up the vegetables and peeling. Put half water, throw the stuff in, blends up instantly. Don't do papaya seeds. You could throw papayas in, you could throw the seeds in, but don't blend the seeds. They're natural dewormers. We feed papaya seeds to our horses to deworm them. Not a nice thing to deworm your worm bin. Right? So just don't blend So them recognize, again, any seed that you do not want to have in your garden is a weed. So you put tomatoes in, you put papayas in, you throw that out afterwards. The worms are not going to neutralize those seeds. They're going to eat everything around them, but they're not going to neutralize them. So if you don't want to grow tomatoes right here, don't actually put, you actually need to actually sterilize or stop, and that's where thermal composting comes in. Or, as those start to sprout, pull them. Okay, pull them and actually let them, you can just pull them and leave them on the top, and the worms will start to break those down as soon as the seeds are done. It seems like you're, you're stacking it really high, and you said not to stack high. Stack I did. Now remember, I said in my last talk when I was here, cubic, uh, cubic yard, a minimum of three cubic feet. That's the absolute bare bones minimum. I think I made the reference to going to Alaska with a t-shirt. You wouldn't do that in the wintertime. You want to have insulation. Same concept for a pile of thermal compost. You want to actually build the pile up so that it actually retains the heat of the respiration of the microbes. This isn't even remotely coming close to that cubic uh, three feet. So what I, when I'm saying you start getting some of these bathtubs, or I've seen people use... Uh, Watering tubs for uh, you know horses and stuff. Use them because you want big scale. That's fine, but you want to keep the layers. Uh, and as you apply food, you want to spread it out. Don't build it up too tall. You will end up getting uh, thermal breakdown. I, I, I feel it seems like you're really filling that up tall. This one is gonna no problem whatsoever. You'll watch these yeah. worms will be just perfectly fine. I just threw a bunch. If you see, look at the, the worms in here. Is it like half full? Yeah, it's about half full. Okay. okay? Um, and then if you want, because of this particular one, I'm not going to do it because it, we're in here. You can see some liquid still dripping out. There is a lot of liquid in the bottom. You're going to find if you get in there and you look at this, it looks too dry. Every once in a while, come down and give it a little watering. There's plenty of water in all of the vegetables and fruits you're going to throw in. So there's plenty of liquid. But you don't have to mix this. You don't have to cover it. You don't have to do anything. You have to cut that apple up. Though. Nope. You could. You could mix it in a blender. I have a Vitamix. You can frappe all this stuff up, you make it beautifully to. homogenized. You can do it. If the worms will love it because it will be much easier for them, but you don't have to do any of it. You can do this. Forget, forget. This is a flush and forget and kind of system. how long does this take to... to it totally depends how many, how many, what's the, the number of worms that are in your thing. Now, I put in a, a handful that I took out of mine. Uh, my worm bins right now, the surface is moving. I have so many worms in there. Okay, so I've obviously created an environment that they love. This is going to happen here. It doesn't matter whether the pasta is dry. Most of the stuff that's cooked, you throw to your chickens, whatever. But anything, if you don't have chickens, you don't have any other animal, boom, throw it to your worms. Don't waste the stuff. This is primo. Primo, primo stuff. What about adding a little bit of earth to the wood? Sure. Again, like I said, this is easy. You can add azomite, you can add compost, you can add all kinds of things. The worms don't care as long as you create an environment that simulates their, their normal environment. Dog poop? Dog shit will work, no problem. I don't like the word poop. I like the word shit. I want to use the word shit because I want to get people's attention up. That's why I talk about humanure. I don't want people to start thinking about flush and forget. I want people to start recognizing if you're a fecophobe, you got, we need to start changing your view. Okay? Shitting in a five gallon bucket is good, but you got to know what you're doing. I can give you that guideline. And I'll tell you what, like I mentioned the last time, take, uh, go on the web, go to Humanure Handbook, download edition one, two, or three, it tells you everything you need to know. Then again, you'll be kind of scared to try it. So if you need to know, I will consult you on how to shit in a bucket. It works really well. You sit, you shit, you cover it. It's done. Okay? It's really damn easy. If my 60-year-old daughter can shit in a bucket, you all can shit in a bucket. All right, guys. Thank you. There you go. So what actually happens afterwards? I don't know who wins.
win this, but win there you have. So how long will it take that bucket to be ready? Well, I'm going to keep adding to it, or whoever wins it is going to keep adding, so this could take you a couple of months. Remember, this is not thermal composting. Thermal compost will actually is the fastest way to break things down, but it's also the most tedious and most uh, the one that you have to actually have the most knowledge on. Okay, so the, the reason I'm teaching this, it's really damn easy. You can't screw this up unless you drown them or you dry them out. But other than that, you're good to go. Okay, you know, wait, wait. Uh, How do you get them out? Wait, 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 wait. After the meeting, we're going to get done. I want to get done through all the raffles. And then you can talk to Greg. Okay? Yep. He'll be around to answer any questions you have. There you go. Greg, thank you so much. You bet. There you go.